Okay, so for uh, getting right into module 11 of the class, uh, we're going to start talking about using files. And that means writing to and reading from files. The really great thing about the ability to work with files is that it allows us to uh, create and store persistent information, stuff that will exist after the program closes, that we can reload into the program the next time we run it so that that data uh, exists. And that's just something we sort of take for granted, right? I mean, like, if I write a term paper on Microsoft Word, obviously, if I can't save that term paper when I'm done, it's sort of useless to me. So it's just something we take for granted. But the ability to save files is actually an important part of creating robust programs that can actually do uh, more stuff. The other thing that, that's useful and often done with Python and files is a lot of times we'll take a, like a large data file and we'll read it into Python and we use Python for like data analysis or training artificial intelligence algorithms. Um, in some cases, instead of having a file on your local machine, we'll use Python to scrape a website. In other words, we'll go out, it'll grab the HTML code from that website and it'll take pertinent information from that page. And I've actually done a fair amount of consulting doing this kind of work with Python, where a company will come to me and say, hey, we need this, comp this other platform has all of our company's information in it, but we wanna move to another platform and we wanna take all our data with us, but they're not giving it to us because they don't want us to move. So actually that company will hire me to go in and build a Python program that will go through that whole website and take all of their information and put it into a nice clean database for them so they can take it to another company and, and change websites. So lots of stuff like that. Um, spam is, is the largely the result of, of programs now that are just constantly going through the web and looking for email addresses on web pages, and they'll actually use, you know, in, in assignment eight, we looked at how to pull email addresses out of text. They'll use a very similar algorithm to, to go through web pages and follow links and get email addresses and put them into a database. And then they sell those databases by the millions to people who wanna send spam emails out. So that's a huge industry. All of that, lucky you, oh, hey, I'm just gonna press pause here. And uh, the Dean has arrived. Okay, so files um, really kind of a big deal in terms of like, leveling up the programs that we can create. Now, I'm not going to show you how to save a file on a remote machine. We're going to keep it really simple. Today, I'm going to, um, I'm going to show you a little bit about some of the functions and methods that we use related to files. And then I'm gonna actually go in and I'm gonna code the ATM machine project with the ability to load in load data from a file and save that data back to a file to show you kind of the how it works piece of it. And then I'm going to give you a sandbox project that has some pre-written code that I want you to just play around with for a little bit. And then on Wednesday, we're going to come back and I'm going to intro the assignment for this week and 
and talk a little bit about that. The interesting thing about the assignment for this week is that it's got a couple of different options. Uh, so you can do something maybe that interests you a little bit more, uh, depending on which option you like better. So that's kind of the game plan for today. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll get right into it because I can't remember what the heck I was saying before that happened. So, opening a file uh, is pretty simple, and, and for the sake of this piece of, of our work, we're going to assume that the file is going to exist in the same directory that your Python script does. That's not required. Like, you can open a file from anywhere else on your computer, and even remote files using other tools. But for the sake of this assignment, we're going to assume that file just lives in that same directory. And that's why we're only putting the file name here. This could be any path that's valid on your computer. So you could do a relative path, you could do an absolute path, you can do all kinds of things. Don't worry about that if that doesn't make sense to you. What we need to know right now is that that file is going to live in the same directory. So, when we open a file, we actually assign it to a variable. So that file, then that variable then becomes a file object. It is the file, in other words. So it takes on all the characteristics of that file. It's not the contents of the file. It actually, you need to actually think of it as it is the file because you can do things with it. So when we create a, a file object, we open the file name, and then we pass it what's called a flag. The flag is a second parameter, so the first, per, first parameter is a string that has the file name in it. The second is the flag. The flag tells Python what we are going to do with the file, the reason we want, the reason that's a good thing is because it protects us from accidentally destroying the contents of the file when we don't mean to. There's some different flags that we use. So if we're going to read from the file, we're going to use R. If we want to append to the file, use A. And when you think of append, I want you to think of like adding to a diary, right? Maybe you keep a diary, maybe you don't, but you probably have seen one on TV at least. But think of a diary. Each day you're going to go into the diary and you're going to add a little bit to it. 
and each time you're just gonna add more to that diary and it it just grows and grows and grows that's what a pen does okay so a pen just adds on to what's already in the file it doesn't do anything with what's already there right on the other hand if you have an existing file if this file already exists and it has stuff in it and I open it with a W whatever I add to that file is going to replace what's in there so that's a really important distinction to make because if you choose W when you meet, mean to choose A you will erase what's in that file to begin with don't you love computers me too. Um, they're very precise that way, but also very stupid because they just do what you tell them to. Uh, computers are kind of dumb like that. But write overwrites what's there, append adds to what's there. Create is a whole different animal. Create only works if the file doesn't exist. So if I put an X here for create, and this file exists already, I get an error. Because the X, the reason we have X is that it forces us to create a new file each time. It's to protect the files that already live there to make sure that we're not overriding something that already exists. So it's sort of the anti-write. Okay, append and write. If there's no file by those names, we'll just create. Create only works if there's no file by that. Those are all three for writing information out to files. Read is just read. Question, why would you want to use W anyways? If you go to this code, you have W, why would you use W? I'll show you, because when I, when I do the code, I, I'm going to actually use W. Because there are times where you want to replace what's there. So once you have a file object, like my file, so this is something that I would have opened with the open function. Now I can read from that file as long as I open it with an R. If I try and read from the file and it's got a W, it's going to throw an error. So in this case, if I go str file text equals my file dot read, it will take the entire contents of that file 
And for the sake of this class, we're going to assume that all of the files we're working with are straight text. They're just plain text files. So we'll take all the contents of that text file and dump it into this variable. Just no matter how big it is, it'll just shove it all into that one variable. If I give an argument to read, it takes a numbered argument, then I can just read the first 10 characters of that file. And there are reasons that you might want to do that. Another one that you might want to know is my file dot read line. This one will take one line of text. But it also does something else. If I have a file that has, let's say, 10 lines of text in it, and I run this during my program on a, I, I open my file and I, and I run this. It'll take the first line of text and it'll put a pointer right before the second line of text. So the next time I call read line, it will pull the second and it'll move the pointer to the third. So each time it'll, get, it'll give me the next line of that file, which is really good because then I can put that in a loop and I can go line by line through that document and do stuff to it. I'm going to show you that too in just a minute. Okay, so when I want to write to a file, Right, I'm going to open the file with the appropriate flag. And no matter how I, what I open it with, the, the, the write command is the same. It's my file.write and then whatever I want to write as a string into that file. Now, if I want to remove or delete a file, be very careful with this first of all, because using this command, you can delete any file on your computer by accident. So, if you, the reason is because I have to import the OS module, operating system, so it gives me operating system level commands, and I'm actually removing the file at an operating system level. All I do is give it the path or the name of that file to do that. So. If, for example, 
I had written a program where I'm asking the user in type the name of the file that you want to delete. I've just given that user the power to delete anything from my computer. Okay? So you run that in a remote situation where the, the user can access that remotely and you've just given a remote user the opportunity to take everything down. Okay? And you, if you think people don't look for opportunities to do that, just know that a very small website that I built and run I woke up on Friday morning to a and what looked like an automated hacker attack looking for vulnerabilities in that website. I just happened to put a script in there that emails me when that happens. So I woke up to a thousand emails that were full of malicious script uh, from the hacker. Uh, I suspect it was an automated person. I don't think somebody sitting in Siberia at their keyboard like hunched over, I'm gonna take Bill down. Uh, because nobody really cares. It was just a little tiny website that I have. Um, but all that to say is if you, if you think things are safe because you're not doing anything major or, or big or out there or whatever, just know that's wrong. Uh, people try and hack things all the time just for fun or to see what they can do so those are the those are the main commands and they're they're really not that hard to remember but if, if you forget uh, the the textbook link for this module has them all in there so we have that so I've got uh, I've got a pretty basic version of the ATM machine here and you can see it loads in um, the big difference is that instead of having a variable for each account I've got a dictionary object that has checking and then the checking balance savings the savings balance the reason I did the balances like this is so that it would be easy to see if I changed anything. So the checking balance is $111.11. This is $2,222.22. And, and savings. That way I can make sure that I'm tracking what's going on there easily without having to remember numbers. So if I run this, this is what it looks like. So I can do a deposit into checking. $10,000 that's 
That's my checking account balance is now ten thousand dollars, one hundred eleven. Or another transaction. I can check the balance. So it's pretty basic, right? But if I if I exit that program and I rerun it and then I check the balance in checking it's back to $111 which let's be honest that's the dumbest ATM on the planet nobody wants to deposit money into an account where if the if the bank has a power outage all of your balances get back reset to the day before uh, and they forget everything so what we're gonna want to do is we're going to not only save the balance as it's updated, but we're also going to load this from a file. So I have a file here called a5data.txt. Okay. And uh, I'm just going to start it there. Checking account as 123.45. And this one has 678.90 or dot .9. Once again, I uh, chose these numbers because they're easy to remember and I can easily see if what I'm doing is working. So now first thing I want to do is I want to create a function that loads the data from that file instead of using these amounts. So it's going to load the data from file from this file right here in fact and use those. The way I'm going to do that because I'm putting this into a dictionary object I'm going to read each line one at a time, and then I'm going to take that line, I'm going to break it apart at the colon, that sounds painful, I'm going to break it apart at the colon, and then I'm going to use the name as the key, and then the amount as the value in the dictionary so it matches what's in there so let's look at this so we've got i guess i don't need that we've got a new function load data I don't need to pass any parameters because it's gonna it's gonna use the file the file name I could pass it the file name but I'm not going to because it's just going to use the same file each time so I'm not going to get too crazy about this. So F temp 
For, uh, that's what I, if, if I want to create a file object, I usually start it with F. And temp is anything I use that's a variable that's local to a, a function, just so I don't confuse myself. That's just sort of a naming convention that I use. Uh, you can use whatever you want. But this is just a regular... Um, this is just a regular old file object here. So I'm going to open a5 data.txt and I'm going to open that to read. Okay. And I'm going to create a while loop. I'm going to go while true because I'm going to loop through each line of that of that file. And in theory, I could have 25 different accounts in that file or I could just have the two. And it should both of those should work. So while true, I'm going to read line. So str temp again, a temporary variable equals f temp dot read line. Okay, so then the first thing it's going to do is put it in there. Now I got to break it apart. Again, at the colon, ouch. All right, so let's break this into an array. All these temp could, could I could confuse myself here, but I'm going to try not to. So I'm going to do str temp and I'm going to split, split, and the, the argument there is a colon. So now that should give me two pieces, right? So I'm going to get two pieces there and let's just make sure, nah, let's not make sure. I, I'm just going to take it for granted because I created that file that it's that I'm always going to have two pieces there. So the first piece is the key. AR temp zero, right? That's the key. STR value equals AR temp and one. So the first the first part, the second part. I also need to make sure that that second part is a float.
and because in my head I know this but let me just point it out to you because you can't see it there's an invisible character right here called the line break that tells it to go down to the next one I'm going to strip that off because I know it's there so I'm going to save myself some problem and I'm going to strip that that'll remove that character and I'm going to take that whole thing and I'm going to change it into a float because it has to be a float for me to do calculations float And there we go. So I have a string and a value. Now all I have to do is add those to a dictionary object. Well, I don't have a dictionary object to put them into yet. Because I have to go through all the lines, add them, and then put it into the dictionary. So I'm going to create a, another, yet another temporary variable. A temporary dictionary object to put those in. So now I can go dtemp and I'm going to use the key and I'm going to put the value in there str value I should make that a float FL value, that sounds like a better than writing all, all the whole word float. Okay. There we go. So now I've added that, and that'll go through each time and add them. Well, how does it know when it reaches the end of the file? Any ideas? else is is the exact thing that we want to be paying attention to right so if the length of str temp And I'm going to strip that just to make sure I don't have any invisible characters tripping me up. Is greater than zero. Then I'm going to do this stuff. Right? And if it's not else then I'm going to break out of the loop. Okay? 
So that'll make sure the minute I get to book now. Here's a here's a potential downfall of this. If I had that in there by accident, it's gonna stop before it gets to the savings account. So I need to make sure that I don't have that. Whether I have this or not doesn't really matter because it's going to strip all of that. So while true, if, if the length is greater than zero, then do that. If not, break. So now, after I break out a loop, I should have everything I need here in dtemp and I just need to return that value now. Return. dtemp. So that should work. Let's try it. So let's put right here. I'm going to load the data. And I need to put it into something. So I'm going to put it into the D accounts. That's the name of my dictionary object that I created. So if this works, then, then the accounts should no longer be 111 and 2222, all those. It should be the new variable values from here. So let's try it. But let's put in a little cheat code so we can see what it does. So if I print the accounts right there after the menu each time then it'll tell us what the value is. So there we go. You can see it loaded the data. Now we're not quite where as robust as we want to be just yet because we're open to some errors here. So I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to put it into a try and accept. I'm going to clean this up a little bit and do a few little things to make it a little bit more robust. So I'm going to put all of that into a try. And accept, print, there was a problem loading the data. Okay. And on this one I can say print ooh on all caps.
print data was loaded. Okay. So that's good. There's one more thing that I need to do. Every time you open a file, you want to close the file. You want to, you want to always, anytime you open it, you always close it. Otherwise, you could have errors and issues if you try and open that file during the same session or the same program. So I want to open it and then I'm going to F oops F temp dot Close. Just like that, I'm going to close the file behind me and clean up my garbage. Now, notice I'm getting a little highlight on D temp here, and the reason for that is that dtemp doesn't necessarily equal anything if I if I get the if I throw an exception there. So I'm gonna put some dummy data in there to keep myself from having further issues. No account and zero. Okay, so now I have a, a dictionary object. So if I fail to load the data, it's just going to put no account and a zero balance in there just to keep things from totally going sideways and crashing. So save it. Let's just run it, make sure it's working. And I can see here it is. I've got the correct checking and savings account numbers there. And so far, so good. So, we've got the data loaded from the file. Now what I need to do is take the data and put it back into the file. Every time I do a, a withdrawal, or a deposit, I want to update the, the file so that if I quit the program right in the middle of something, it's, it's all saved. So let's do that. Okay, so we're going to create another function, DEF. Save data. And in this case, I am going to give it a dictionary object. So I'm going to feed it the accounts to save in the file. So I'm going to put dtemp as a parameter there. That way I don't have to worry about 
accessing any globals there because I'm passing the, the data in. So dtemp, I need to go through each piece of that dictionary, each key, and create a file. So I'm going to create a str temp that's empty because that's where I'm going to build. The, I'm going to build it all into a string. I'm going to put all the stuff in there, and then I'm going to take that string and push it out to the file. Okay, so I'm going to build that. I'm going to also loop through str. Item, or uh, let's go str key in d temp. So for each key in the temporary uh, in the temporary dictionary object that I create. I am going to create, I'm going to add to str temp plus equals, so I'm going to add to that, and I'm going to start with str key. Okay, so that's the first thing I'm going to add. And then I'm going to add the colon because I want to be able to split it again next time. And then I'm going to add str, uh, oops, dtemp. And str key, which will pull the value and put it in there. And then at the end of the line, a new line character so that it formats it correctly. Okay, so. After I build that string with all the stuff in it, then I need to open the file ftemp equals open a5 data.txt and I'm opening it for writing this time because each time I'm going to overwrite what's in there. So this file right now has this balance in it. And after I do a deposit, I want to put, I want to overwrite what's there with the new balances. So I'm just going to write the new balances for all the accounts each time. Okay, so I'm going to go F temp. Right. Oops, there it is. 
ftemp dot write str temp f temp dot close okay now there's not a whole lot here but one thing I do need to do is change this because this don't forget is a float so I need to change it to a string so I can add it to a string so I'm going to change that to a string I could I could put some try and catch stuff around here but this is pretty straightforward. I know that if this file doesn't exist, it's just going to create it. I know that uh, this is not going to have an issue. That's not going to have an issue. The only potential issue would have been here, but I caught that and changed it to a string. It's pretty, it's pretty safe to skip all of the error, error catching here. And then I'll just print data was saved correctly. There we go. And so now all I have to do here is just add that to both the deposit and the withdrawal okay so save data and i'm passing it the accounts save data and the accounts so i added that to both of these now so that it will automatically save that data okay so let's run this data was loaded correctly okay from that amount so I'm going to close that now. And uh, let's go ahead and make a deposit into checking. Let's do an exorbitant amount of money so it's obvious. Okay. Tells me the new balance. One, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Says the data was saved correctly. Okay, let's check the balance of checking okay so it comes up correct 
But now watch me, I'm going to exit, exit the program, okay, and let's open the data file, and there is There's the balance saved there. So now when I reopen that, it's going to load those values right back in. And if I check that, balance there it is so that's the full life cycle as long as you are making the file the same each time and you can reliably read that file then you're not going to have any issues. And you can do this as many times as you want. And I could, in theory, have as many accounts as I wanted to. I've set this up only for checking and savings, but I could, I could have a million accounts if I wanted to here and it would work just the same. Okay, so um, what I'm going to send you to right now is I'm going to take you down to module 11 here. And if you go down to open it in sandbox here in module 11, you're going to see some code here. Some sample code that you can copy and paste into PyCharm and some sample text that you can save into a text file. You can see that, that opening the text file is called madlibs2.txt. I'm going to just leave you with this to play around with, but what this does, what this script does that I've written, is it opens a text file that has Madlibs text, just like our Madlibs assignment before. But instead of the Mad Libs being the same each time, what it does is it actually reads the text file. And you can see I've got these, or maybe you can't see because it's kind of small. What you'll see is that I've got these curly braces, these double curly braces around words like adjective one or a noun one. And what it will do is it'll go through and pull those out and it'll ask the user for words based on those and then we'll put them back into that blank and spit out the result. 
So this whole thing, and it will save that to a file. It'll save the new Mad Libs with the words inserted to a new file. So, uh, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take this and these and download them and create files and play around with them, see if you can get it working and play around with it a little bit just to see how you can how you can work through some of these things when we come back on Wednesday we're going to add a little bit more to this and then I'm going to show you the assignments uh, like I said, there are two different projects to choose from, so uh, I'm going to explain both of them and talk through some of the things that you're going to need to know for each one of them. But if you can get comfortable with just using files today, that would be a good start and a, a good way to prep yourself for Wednesday. Any questions?